couple of things, Albert, today. So I heard the story about Gronk trade. Robert Kraft said, quote, it's hogwash. Then I read a story yesterday. No, before the draft, they were considering it. Can you create some clarity here? Was Gronk on the trading block, albeit for a short time? Yes. Um, now, I don't think they were shopping Gronk to the entire league, but there were some teams they trust that I you know, know that they talk to. Detroit, Tennessee, Houston, San Francisco. You guys can make the connections there. Um, you know, I, I think it kind of come to a point where it was, you know, like they, 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 they felt like he'd sort of disengaged from the program. He was asking for a raise. And really, you know, what it took was, and I don't know if you saw this or not, but there was the bizarre um, press conference before that monster truck rally at Gillette Stadium that Gronk had. Yeah. And that sort of served as the, all right, we need to get him in here now. And we need to sit down and talk with him because this can't keep going the way that it's going. And, uh, you know, so Bill has Gronk in. And at that point, they've had some discussions about trading him. And Gronk sat down with Bill. And you know, all indications I got is that, that Gronk basically affirmed to Bill he wants to be a Patriot. And that's when they decided, okay, we're going to try to work out contract terms to go forward with this thing. But there was a come-to-Jesus moment moment here and that was you know after that press conference which i mean it's interesting because things were pretty bad before that you saw gronk kind of trolling the patriots on social media obviously he wants a new deal he was rumbling about potentially retiring and really i think it, it took the the whole situation coming off the rails as it did during that press conference for them to come to some sort of resolution so these trade talks weren't anytime recent before the draft, there was certainly some discussion that he could be moved. Albert, um, you you really have a unique uh, insight to the Patriots, and you cover the league. But listen, the Malcolm Butler thing, there's been a reverb to it, and, and my partner Jason Whitlock called it. He said, this is not going to play well. Players want answers. They, they, they surrender yeah. money, and they sacrifice for Bill. They want a straight answer, and they're not getting any. I mean, Brady now, OTAs, no thanks, taking a shot at Belichick at a symposium with Jim Gray in L.A. Gronk's kind of trolled the Patriots. And they just canceled the last couple of days of OTAs. I wonder if you think there's a connection where Bill, who has never been into image, is realizing, you know, we saw Robert Kraft, Meek Mill, all of a sudden a story leak. We like Lamar Jackson, Belichick canceling OTAs. Hey, man. Is, is it changing a little bit that Bill gets now? He's got to be more player-friendly? No, I mean, I think they've always done things that, that, to, to try to you know, build team unity and connect with their players and all of that. Um, you know, the big thing is that, that the program's just a very demanding one. You know? And I, I honestly believe like if someone tried to come into a new team in 2018 the way that Bill Belichick you know, came to the Patriots in 2000, it probably wouldn't work now. Um, it's just the game's changed. The athletes have changed. The way they come up has changed. And so, uh, you know, I, I, I think I think Bill's kind of grandfathered in. And the key here, and you mentioned his name, is Tom Brady. Um, one of the biggest keys to everything that they do is that forever and ever, Brady's been able to coach Tom hard. He's been able to go out, MF him on the, on the practice field been able to treat him like he's the 30th guy in the roster. They've been able to pay him like he's an average quarterback. And, you know, forever, Bill's been able to, you know, run his program this way and, and point over at number 12 and say, look, the greatest player who's ever played this game is just fine with it. But none of you other guys have any room to say anything. And so, you know, when, when Brady shows that he's off the reservation, even just a little bit, that changes the dynamic completely. Like, Gronk doesn't pull all of this stuff this offseason unless Brady's, you know, a little upset with things, too, right? Like, that doesn't happen unless Brady's gone off the reservation a little bit himself. And that sort of thing trickles down. So, really, I think so much of this and so much of what we've seen this offseason is a result of the fracture in the relationship between Bill and Tom. And that, of course, traces back to the Garoppolo trade. Yeah. I mean, the truth is they the Jets could start a rookie quarterback, the Bills could start a rookie quarterback, and Tannehill's coming off an injury. It's still a dominant yep. a dominant team that'll probably win the division and have a bye in home field. But, you know, there there does I, I want to ask you kind of a macro NFL question. Todd Haley came out yesterday and in a moment of frankness, 
uh, bluntness, he said, yeah, Tyrod Taylor's our starting quarterback, and it's pretty clear he's the leader of the team, and Baker Mayfield's got a long way to go. You came out before the draft and immediately after it and said, hey, most people didn't have Baker number one on their board. Did you read anything into Todd Haley's quotes basically saying, this this kid, he's not blowing us away? No, I mean, I think that they're just trying to keep him humble. And look, I mean, you know, Haley's been this way with other quarterbacks. There, there was friction between him and Ben. You know, I, because you know, he wasn't willing to, to, to kiss Ben's behind, you know, and he's not going to do that with Baker either. You know, I think that this, to, to me, this is just establishing to the team, like, we're in a win-now spot. Like, like that coaching staff has to win in 2018. And that message has been sent with some of the player acquisitions, Tyrod Taylor trading for Demarius Randall, trading for Jarvis Landry. Um, they have to send that message to the team, and they have to, I mean, they have to be in a position to win come week one. And so I think creating that around Tyrod Taylor, um, creating kind of a, a you know, a, a mentality that we've got a veteran quarterback and going forward with it, I think is good for the team. Now the players will know when we get to August, if Baker all of a sudden comes in and he starts turning corners and you see him growing up and everything else, I wouldn't rule out Baker Mayfield winning the job. This is just sort of the stuff that you have to say right now. Baker's got time to catch up. And, and, and one other thing here, Colin, let's remember, this is the same kid who started at a Big 12 school as a true freshman walk-on. That is borderline impossible to do. Like, like at the quarterback position, to start as a walk-on in a major conference school is completely unheard of. And so, you know, Baker can say all the right things, too, about how he's okay being the backup and everything else. You can't tell me that, that that kid doesn't think that over the next three months he's going to find a way to win the job. Yeah, that's a good point. By the way, hear anything about Sam Darnold and the Jets? I, I think he's going to be their week one starter, Colin. And that's, I mean, you know, based on what I know about how they feel about him, what they've gotten out of him the last five or six weeks, um, you yeah, know, he keeps taking the incremental steps. So that's obviously an important piece of it. Maybe more important, though, um, you know, just go back to the last two years at SC. Uh, the, the, the big thing when you're starting a rookie quarterback, you don't want to risk the kid's confidence, and you and, and, and you want to be sure that he can take it, right? And I don't think there was anybody in college football that was better at compartmentalizing mistakes last year than Sam Darnold. A lot of turnovers, but he was able to bounce back from all of them, and he took a lot of hits because they had a – brand new offensive line in 2017 and so you know i i just i look at you know what the jets think of him and then i add to that what he was at sd and how that's prepared him to go through what it means to start as a rookie at quarterback in the nfl i think he's got a heck of a chance to be their week one starter hi everybody thanks for watching subscribe here to get the latest from the show also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from The Herd or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.